Hello there. Decided to make another vid. This time of my absolute favorite cruiser. Well, so far. I've only played the entire 8 of the cruisers. But the Megami. It's a Japanese cruiser, Tire 8. And it's been the source of much discussion. Because uh, it has a series of upgrades, some of which are a bit questionable. For example, I didn't have the third hull upgrade, which is a very, very small AA increase, but it costs almost 3 million, so people rarely buy it, and I haven't bought it, I never saw any need. I've already unlocked the Ibuki on this ship, and uh, it was very, very easy, because I think this is a XP machine for a cruiser, and I find the ship absolutely fantastic. Another source of discussion is the uh, kind of guns on it. You see, the default Megami comes with 155mm guns, a total of 15 of them, but there's a gun upgrade that changes them to 203mm guns, just like the next ship uh, the Ibuki and the Zao eventually uses. But the cost of using that upgrade is that you lose one gun on every single turret. So you lose a total of five guns just to get that caliber increase. And of course, because you go up in caliber, you, well, you gain, of course, penetration and a flatter trajectory on your shells and faster shells, but you give up a lot of things as well. You give up the extremely fast reload, you end up losing a bunch of DPM if you use it. So, personally, I always thought that uh, the 155mm were much better, because you, you also gain a lot of synergy from your captain perks. For example, the one that increases your AA by 10% and also gives you 10% reload, it only works with the 155mm guns. And then we have the Tire 4 perk, Advanced Firing Training, which uh, increases the range of 155mm guns and anti-air. And of course, for those who are not aware, increasing the size of your anti-air coverage also increases the size of uh, your defensive AA fire perk, or skill, I mean. This, uh, it increases the radius at which you panic enemy bombers and fighters. So, obviously, it's a massively powerful perk to get on every single cruiser since you want to be able to protect your fellows and yourself and Mogami with 155mm 155 guns using that perk also gains a massive 18km range so you can easily mingle with your battleships and still use uh, uh, AA to co you still use AA to cover them and still like nuke enemy ships from range with these in case you missed it, the reason I just bumped into the Atlanta was the planes earlier there spotted me and I was about to round the corner into the open with my broadside facing the enemy while being spotted. And uh, for a Japanese cruiser, that's a big no-no. They are, except for the Zao, but even the Zao isn't that armored, but uh, they are very thinly armored and they have a big citadel. So if, if there would have been a battleship like the Colorado, if he, he could have easily have broadsided me there because I was, uh, I was detected by the planes and I was about to sail straight out. That's why I instead bumped into the Atlanta, just to show a small profile. Here I'm already turning away, once again angling my armor. Very much like in the Pensacola vid, I'm angling my ship to make sure I'm hard to hit. Now, do you see how much damage I just did? That was one wallet that landed. That was a total of 7,000 damage and fire on him. He instantly repaired the fire. Which I think will come to cost... Oh wait, no, did he? I can't see his HP ticking. I think he might have repaired the fire. No, it's not losing HP. I think he blew his repair, but it's still affected. I know, I'm not sure. I think I might have forced him to repair, burn, burn his repair there. And now he's on fire again by myself. And uh, the torpedo, I think, is causing flooding, so he's moving very slowly. I think that one single fire I set on him at the start already doomed this Colorado to death. Now, of course, ability-wise, I'm using the premium repair and, of course, the fighter ship and uh, defensive AA to help me both against carriers. This guy, you see how quickly he's melting, he's under me and Atlanta's fire. And the DPM on this Mogami with 155mm guns is actually 234k, which is almost 15% higher than the Cleveland, which is quite, quite scary. Actually, no, it's even, it's more than 15% higher than the Cleveland. So this is, this is like the Japanese equivalent of the Cleveland. 
It's basically the Cleveland of crack. Because uh, unlike the Cleveland's 155mm guns, uh, these 155mm shells have a much flatter trajectory and they travel much faster. I'm saving my defensive AA fire here, by the way, because we have two other cruisers here. So one of them will probably use it, or they will simply shoot down this plane. Yeah, there's, there was no need to waste it there. I'm not going to waste it on uh, here when he already has this much protection. I'd rather save it for when it's needed. This North Carolina, by the way, exactly is playing exactly how you're supposed to play your battleship. He's not sitting around. Like, look at the bottom left. You see the enemy North Carolina sailing away, being a pussy. And then you see our North Carolina, who sees that they are lacking defense on this side, so he's leading the charge, he's tanking the damage, he's attracting the air, but uh, we are able to support him, and basically he's leading the charge for us. And this is how you're supposed to play a battleship. You're supposed to be aggressive, and the cruisers are supposed to back you up. But this is a fairly big rarity on public servers, because people usually tend to be quite big pussies. But, uh, is, but the Mogami... Uh, I already said the armor is very thin, but it does compensate quite nicely by the fact that it has a very, very low detection range, or concealment. It only has 12.1 uh, kilometer from enemy ships, so you can literally get within 13 kilometers and open from com complete stealth and be perfectly fine. And uh, if you want to disengage, it's very easy, you just don't shoot for 20 seconds and you're stealthed again. So. The Magami makes up for its very thin armor by having very good concealment, which is something you have to learn to use. If you keep shooting while trying to run away, well then obviously you're gonna be detected the entire way and you're gonna get damaged the entire way. And uh, AP once again, it's uh, questionable when and where to use the AP. Like, uh, I usually use it against Japanese cruisers at this time mostly. I rarely use it against American cruisers because I find them to be quite heavily armored. But Japanese cruisers, if they give a really good broadside, I'll go for it. You can see the amount of damage I'm doing on this guy, like constantly fires and constant damage popping up. And he's, he's evading, he's turning, he's kiting, he's doing his best to get away, but just using my front turrets, I'm bringing 9 guns to bear. Oh, the Ryu is here? Okay, look at the top left. I have 30,000 damage done. That's not counting fire damage, of course. Or, yeah, burning damage. I have 30k damage done. And how many seconds do we spend here? But you can see the damage counter, like how massively quickly this thing pumps out damage. When I started shooting this Ryo, I had 30k damage done. Now I have 56k, 57k. Yeah, 57k. In that time, I did 27,000 damage during those few volleys. Now I'm activating my defensive fire, of course, because I want to protect our North Carolina buddy who led the charge for us, who played exactly how it's supposed to be. So in turn, I play my cruiser exactly how I'm supposed to be. I go for the enemy, fire, enemy bomber planes and I activate my defensive fire. So I spread out all the torps, I spread out all the bombs, so he practically didn't get, didn't get hit a single time. Basically, he was our meat shield when we get in, so in return we protect him from the biggest nemesis, aka these destroyers and carriers. This is the kind of synergy and team play that uh, is the very basis of the game, but you rarely see people use it, or people like play together properly, especially in lower tires. It starts happening quite a lot more often in higher tires, but it depends a lot on how many premium players you have. I saw him shoot, that's why I'm turning. I don't want to be the first guy in. This is a very bad spot for a Magami. You don't have the armor to be the first guy rushing in or charging or tanking. You just... your armor is too paper thin. So I'm avoiding angling my armor, doing my best. Now I see there's a Metaga shooting me from the front as well. And this guy has his cannons turned away. So I'm giving broadside to the North Carolina because I know where his cannons are pointed. And I'm pointing my bow towards the Ataga. So if the Ataga uses AP, he has, he'll have trouble hitting it. Or well, doesn't matter what he uses, but with AP he won't get any nice citadels. Now, when you give your broadside to enemy battleships like I'm doing now, you have to keep an eye out for his cannons. You have to constantly keep an eye out. Now I see the cannons are starting to turn, so I'm starting to turn away. I set the fire on him again, lots of damage. Yeah, his cannons are turning slowly, you see them turning, so now I need to turn completely. Now I'm gonna turn completely away from him. I don't wanna risk, oh, North Carolina can blow straight through me without issues. I blew my repair a bit quickly there. I should, shouldn't have burned it that quickly, but I thought that since the Otago will go into cover, he can't shoot me anymore. But uh, 
I obviously underestimated the arc of his shots. He can quite easily arc over those uh, hills. Uh, we got another bomber plane going for North Carolina, and our Atlanta left him. He didn't stay and defend him, so this might be a problem. Because I'm, I'm staying with the other North Carolina, kept with him, capping the point, but our Atlanta left the North Carolina, which can lead to trouble. If you go in like this, you shouldn't abandon your battleships. Then again, our battleship shouldn't have sailed away from us either. He should have stuck with the group. For him to run off like that, uh, it's, it's hard to decide whose fault it is, but it was foolish of him to split up. Because when you're facing enemy carriers, you want to like bunch up, make a blob, overlap your AA, overlap your defensive fires. Especially when you have the advanced firing training perk. Uh, which increases the panic radius, then you're able to really well cover the entire fleet. You can see how much damage I'm doing to this guy, like how many fires. I've already lost count. I've got eight fires done this game already. It's just, this is a fire machine. Now, uh, he's pr probably dead by this point. I even set another fire on him, so I'm just gonna ignore him. And now I'm gonna switch to AP, because this is, as I said, a Japanese cruiser, and he's turning. He's about to give me broadside. That's the North Carolina dead. He's about to give me broadside, which is the opportunity I'm waiting for. I only use my front cannons, but I got AP loaded, so that's instantly a citadel and heavy damage done. Now I repair quickly here, because uh, I don't want to lose a turret. I want to be able to bring my full broadside to bear. Solved, There's another Ataga that popped up though, which makes this quite scary. So once again, you of course have torpedoes on the ship as well. 10 kilometer range, they're quite useful. You see, this is the first time I even use them. People tend to, when people play Japanese cruisers, especially first time Otago players, they tend to think of the torpedoes as one of the main weapons, while the torpedoes are only an accessory. You see, once again, I'm activating my, uh, my defensive AA farm, because I want to protect our North Carolina. Because of my increased radius, I know that I'm already panicking the fighters, so I don't even have to look there to know that the North Carolina will be just fine. I'm panicking the fighters to the extent that they won't be able to get any decent damage on. And this guy is pretty much dead. I shot down a couple planes without even targeting him. Maybe I should have targeted the bombers or the torpedo planes, but it doesn't really matter. And the torpedoes I shot earlier, they scored a hit on the other Ataga I was talking about. So now I'm no longer afraid to push up because uh, he's so low HP and my Ataga body is tanking some damage right now. What we're doing here is also we're screening for our North Carolina who's capping the point. We know there's a Fubuki here based on the amount of torpedoes we saw and he got spotted briefly. So we are screening for our North Carolina basically. We're intercepting the planes he's trying to go for him and we're forcing the Fubuki to back away, at which point he cannot nuke our very low HP North Carolina, who has this far, thus far played very well. He pushed into the point, he f led the charge, and now he's capping, while us, the screening force, the cruisers, are intercepting enemy planes, intercepting enemy ships, forcing the destroyers away, and letting him finish the camp. Which is exactly how it should be. How you're supposed to play it. I took target on the torpedo plane, just in case, if he tries to go for me. I don't think he'll get close enough to do anything before being shot down. Yeah, he got shot down. And you see the Fubuki, even though he smoked, he's forced to back away. Because we got two cruisers pushing at him relentlessly. So he cannot go and harass our North Carolina, which is the target he would want to harass. And you're pretty much the last person, as a 155mm Mogami, you're pretty much the last person that a destroyer wants to face, like, if you think you're much scarier than any, the only thing that's scarier than you is maybe an Atlanta, but you have much faster projectiles than the Atlanta, so you're able to land, land shots much easier. So you're basically just a terror for destroyers. So it's no wonder that he's basically legging it as fast as he can. And you can see at this point, even though I don't have the fully upgraded AA, because I only have two hulls worth, I don't have the third, which is a small buff. I've already shot down 18 planes, even though I haven't even been trying to shoot planes. I've just been shooting them down and defending my battleships on the way with the help of AA fire. At this point, I see the score is fairly even, but we have no defense left, and now we're actually down a ship. So I am going to charge straight for this North Carolina, 
and keep forcing this Fubuki back and make sure that any sort of fire they land, any sort of shots they land will be shot at me instead of North Carolina. I'm basically the bait at this point. If I sink, it doesn't really matter because the North Carolina will secure the win for our team. So I'm basically running up to be the meat shield. Oh, the Fubuki. He fucked up or he got brave. I don't know which, but you don't want to show yourself to a Megami. He's very much dead. And I was just about to shoot down the torpedo planes once again, intercepting for my North Carolina buddy. And the game is over. 19 planes shot down, almost 200 hits. A nice amount of XP for myself. And a total of 148,000 damage. So, and it's, it was a 15 minute game. So it was ended up being quite a nice game to showcase the ship really because you got to see all the different flavors and all the different abilities that it brings to the table and that's probably the reason why it's one of my favorite cruisers in the entire game. I don't know how well the Ibuki will match up but we'll see that later.